Hello everyone, you're watching the US Military Channel. Today we'd like to show you the new F-15 EX fighter jet. The Pentagon is set to buy the first of Boeing's new 4th Gen Plus F-15 EX fighters. The new purchase will cost the government $1.1 billion for eight of the new aircraft, with more buys to come in later years. For those wondering why the Air Force would opt to buy an upgraded version of an older fighter instead of more modern stealth fighters like the F-35, even the Air Force was surprised to find it was getting the F-15EX, let alone 144 of them. Eventually, the F-15EX will replace the aging F-15CD, and those aircraft will be decommissioned. Earlier this month, the U.S. Air Force literally dropped a giant curtain to reveal its latest fighter jet, the F-15EX Eagle II. The ceremony at Edgeland Air Force Base in Florida marked the official debut of the twin-engine aircraft, complete with puffs of fogs to set the scene. Despite some complaints about the jet's uncreative new name, the Boeing-made fighter deserves a closer look. Brand new aircraft models don't often enter service, and when they do, they fly for decades. This model F-15 is the latest in a long line of aircraft with similar names, dating back to the 1970s, so it can be hard to know precisely what is new about this gray wing machine. Here's everything you might want to know about the F-15 EX Eagle II and its metal ancestors, plus what one pilot says is the craft's key weakness in 21st century battles. The History of the F-15 Eagle If you close your eyes and picture a generic fighter jet, the kind you might see in a movie, you're probably imagining something like an F-15 or F-16. Although if you're thinking about Top Gun, those were F-14 Tomcats. All those letters and numbers can get confusing. So here's what to know about the essence of the F-15 Eagle. The Eagle is a child of the 1960s and 1970s, and it had a straightforward purpose, to excel at air-to-air -air fighting. It comes from this unique historical moment, says Michael Hankins, a curator with the National Air and Space Museum, who's writing a book on both the F-15 and F-16. He pegs its genesis in 1964. Here's a faction of folks, within the Air Force anyway, that have this idea that the traditional fighter mission, focusing on air-to-air -air combat, has not been adequately paid attention to. The Eagle grew out of that single-purpose mission, become not a pound for air-to-ground, Hankin says, meaning the plane wouldn't be equipped for dropping bombs. It was all about air-to-air -air fighting. It's a simple idea, create a flying hammer, not an airborne Swiss army knife. The plane flew for the first time in the early 1970s, and Hankin says that in the decades since, it has executed its mission superbly. It's got an incredible reputation, he notes. You can't deny that the F-15 is one of the best air-to-air -air fighters in history, and I think it's one of the most iconic. The F-15EX, the newest Eagle. The latest version of the Eagle, officially called the Eagle II, is what will carry aviators into the life-or-death contest. The C and D model F-15s are getting old, so this is what will replace them. Pilots will now have a high-definition color touchscreen that measures 19 by 10 inches. A secondary screen is in the back seat for use if the rear spot is occupied. Netflix, anyone? Although the plane will probably be occupied by just a single person most of the time. The Eagle II is now completely fly-by-wire, too. Instead of those previous gen pulleys and cables, the plane now digitally interprets how the pilots move the controls, and then electronic signals talk to the rest of the aircraft. Pilots sometimes say that with this kind of aircraft, human aviators are just voting. They vote by moving the stick to tell the plane what they'd like to do, while the flight control computers figures the rest out. The plane also has what's known as an open mission system backbone, says Major Aaron Eshkenazi, a pilot with the Air Force who has been flying the F-15EX. That makes the aircraft more modular. Engineers can plug software code into it for a new sensor or weapon, for example and that system is isolated from our safety of flight. The Eagle II is similar to what Boeing has already been making for foreign customers. The F-15SA for Saudi Arabia and the QA for Qatar. The Air Force says it may purchase as many as 144 of them. It's a big shiny metal object. Predictably, 
Some F-15 pilots disagree with that assessment. Eshkenazi, who is flying the F-15EX, now notes that the platform can carry a larger weapon payload than the F-35. For example, it can hold a dozen AMRAAM missiles. He also points out that the Eagle makes a good distraction when paired with a stealth fighter, the same way a magician might pull your eyes toward something shiny to keep you from noticing a sneaky move. The Eagle can fly with an F-22 or F-35 for example, and the adversary's eyes would be on the Eagle. It allows my 5th gen and 6th gen partners to go undetected, and Kanazi notes. Camp, the former Eagle pilot agrees, simply being seen can be a deterrence. Our task is to clear the skies, he says. We don't have to shoot one missile. We have to put fear in the enemy's eyes and have them turn away and go home. The F-15EX can carry nearly two dozen air-to-air -air missiles, courtesy of new amber missile racks, air-to-ground weapons, such as the Paveway series of laser-guided bombs and JDAN satellite-guided weapons. The plane also has the ability to carry future hypersonic weapons and features a new AN-APG-82 radar integrated electronic warfare suit, Eagle passive active warning and survivability system, enhanced fly-by-wire controls, and an all-digital cockpit with flat-screen displays and touch panels. The new batch of F-15 fighters could easily serve for 35 years, which means the Eagle may become the longest continuously serving fighter of all time, with a lifespan of an astonishing 82 years. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.